The language of the Holy Spirit is a language of dreams and visions. All this involves pictures. Amen. The Bible tells us that this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Aren't we living in the last days, friends? Says God that I'll pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to say this. Both dreams and visions are the language of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And both involve what? Pictures. Faith pictures from God. Prophetic vision. If that is the language of the Holy Spirit, let's say you are, you are you're conversing with someone of a different language, you need to learn the person's language. If you want to converse with him in his mother tongue, in his language, you need to know how he speaks, uh, what are the expressions to, 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 uh, to use so that he can understand you. Amen? Now, many a times for men, uh, 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 you know, uh, adopting the language takes some time. But for the Holy Spirit, it's an instant. You receive the Holy Spirit and you learn straight away. Amen. In fact, this year, the Lord will ensure that those who want Him to really, you know, make them disciples, amen, learners of the ways of the Lord, they will definitely learn the language in a short time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The moment you are filled with the Holy Spirit, amen, the Lord begins to speak to you in visions and dreams. The problem is because of the voices, and some voices seem to be authoritative uh, uh, voices in the church, and they have said, don't look for visions. It's dangerous. The devil is able to give you a vision. And that is true. Uh, uh, other people can give you false visions. And that is also true. But don't let the negatives, you know, when you embark in life, for example, when someone gets married, you know, the, the, the pastor does not say to the bride and groom, uh, do you know what are the clauses that you can use uh, to, to divorce this uh, partner of yours? Are you aware? We don't talk about that. Why? We are believing for the best for the marriage. Amen. We are believing the best. Amen. In the things of God. We don't look at the negative. We don't look at the… Doesn't mean the negatives are not there. But the focus on the negative is what has caused a lot of people to shun. Amen. To disfavor. Amen. To disesteem visions and dreams. I want you to, to do this. Amen. From now on. I, I want you to really find time if you can. All right? Maybe not this week, but next week. But do find time early in this year to take a book. When you take a book before the Lord, what it tells the Lord is that you are in a position of faith. Amen? You're expecting God. That's what I do all the time. My, all the sermons that I have, many a times, you know, just a book. I have a book standby all the time with a pen. Amen? You can use your smartphone if you want in your notes and all that. But uh, I, I like books. And that's why in my library, there are books and books of exercise books. Amen. That I have of different sizes and all that. All my revelations are all there. Things I receive from the Lord is all there because of this scripture verse that I want to give you right now in from Habakkuk. And uh, what happened is that uh, Habakkuk has been complaining to God and Habakkuk says this, I'll stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. So first of all, position. You must position yourself. You must find time where you let the Lord speak to you. Listen, my friend. You cannot expect to be watching Netflix all the time and expect God to speak to you. You, you want God to speak to you in the areas of your marriage or your, your, your career or your studies or your children, your own life, or in terms of your walk with God and the areas that you need to know. You need the time. You need to spend time, set aside time. You know, having all these uh, legitimate things and all that on the outside is fine. But do find time. That's what Habakkuk did. He, he uh, positioned himself. I stand upon my watch and I set myself on the rampart. So get a, get a book that you can write on. Bring it before the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm watching to see what you will say to me. And that's exactly what Habakkuk says. I'll set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. Actually, it's a very interesting thing that he said. He said, I'll watch to see. I'll watch to see what he will say to me. Now, he could have said, I'll set myself on the rampart to know, to understand what he will say to me, to receive his word. Or, but instead of that, he said, I'll watch to see. I will watch to see what he will say to me. 
And that's why in many of the places where Hazon vision appears, you will find that in the beginning of Isaiah, the Hazon vision that came to Isaiah, and the, vi- the Hazon that he Hase, the vision that he saw. Amen. And time and time again, all the different ones in the Bible, you know, the prophets, they see the vision, the Hazon vision, they see the Hazon vision, and then they has the, the Hase, they see it, that's the verb of the noun, and they walk in it or they prophesy it. Amen. Praise God. So get ready. Watch what He will say. So God's Word comes in what? If you're watching to, to see, that means what? It comes to you in a vision on the inside. But friend, this is the key. You need to ask God. You need to pray. Have you noticed that all the people that received the vision from the Lord, even uh, last week we talked about Peter on the rooftop and also uh, Cornelius in his house, They were all praying. It it was while they were praying, they had a vision. While Peter was praying, he had a vision. While Cornelius was praying, he had a vision. Remember Saul, before he was Paul? You know, God God had a, you know, God stopped him from his his, uh, daily assignment to capture, you know, Christians and throw them in prison and have some of them killed even. God stopped him on the road to Damascus. And then he was blinded for three days. And then God arrested a man called uh, a a, a good, a righteous man, a a believer by the name of Ananias. And God said to him, Ananias, there's a man called Saul and he's praying. This is what God said. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and his name means the grace of God. Hananiah in the Hebrew. And the Lord said to him in a vision. So even for Hananiah, God said to him in a vision. And he said, "Here here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in. So he is praying. So while he is praying, while Saul was praying, who became Paul later on, while Saul was praying, a vision came to him. Behold, he is praying and in a vision, he has seen a man named Hananiah coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. So Saul was praying and while he was praying, amen, he began to see. Now notice, physically his eyes was blinded those three days. But spiritually, that's what I'm talking about, the Hazon vision. May God open the eyes of your heart, amen, to see what God wants you to see. The Hazon vision. He saw a man called Grace of God, which will be the calling of Paul's ministry. Amen. And when his eyes was open, even physically, the first person he saw was the grace of God, which should tell him the theme of his life. Amen. The calling for which he's called with a high calling. Amen. Is to proclaim, proclaim the grace of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice in Habakkuk, this is what it says. Habakkuk went, goes on to say, I'll watch to see what he'll say to me and what I'll answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Write the vision, and the word vision here is chazon, and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Remember I told you just now, as you seek the Lord, have a book ready, amen. Even God gives you a picture, you can draw it, or a verse, or you know, God gives you a a statement, whatever, you can write it down, amen. So the book becomes like a spiritual journaling of your life. Amen. And you look back one day, I have have stacks of books where I journal before the Lord of of many, many years. And sometimes it's just edifying for me. It's so uh, a faith building for me just to go back and see how faithful God has been. Amen. So write down what God shows you. If the writers of the Bible did not write down what God showed them, we won't have the Bible today. Everything was God breathed. They are all secretaries. Amen. They didn't, uh, 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 they didn't initiate those, those words. It's from God. But they were all secretaries. They were all scribes. They wrote down what God said. Learn to write down. Be a young, the, young, the younger people today need to write down things. Amen? We, we have a generation previously that would write down things a lot. But today, we have lost that generation. Amen? They only write things down when they are in school, in university. You know, but, but uh, if you write things down, you see, it is a form of no confidence in the flesh. 
You may say, I, I'll remember that, I'll remember that. But friend, that's confidence in the flesh. And many times you forget the very gem, the very vision, that very revelation that God has given you that will strengthen you in your times of, of depression, in your times of, you know, when you are feeling down and all that. And the word that's supposed uh, to encourage you, you forgot because you didn't write it down. But if you, at times I just go through my Bible, my white margin Bible to see what I, I've written on the side and it revives me again. I look at my exercise book and I see what I wrote inside there and, and, and there were things that I write that I, four years ago that I've forgotten. Don't forget, Satan comes to steal the word, Jesus said. Every time the, and the word there is in the form of vision. Amen. We see many times it comes in the form of vision. Satan comes to steal the word. The word of God. So write the vision down that he may run who reads it. What does that mean? Not only are you walking in the Spirit, you are running. Hallelujah. Amen. Make it plain. It says very clearly, write it down, make it plain on tablets. Isn't it interesting that today we are back to tablets again? Amen. Make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Amen. It'll be clear to all. It'll be clear to the one who reads it. Amen. Especially you. Amen. You will, you will read it again and then you will run with it. You will run with it. Run is the idea of success. Amen. You will run with it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.